A damning new report shows that despite all of the sacrifices Canadians are making for the environment, the Liberals are nowhere near their targets. As well, they're hiding that from us. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. The Auditor General of Canada is doing does an audit on many things, and they are doing one on Stephen Gilbo's department and, and their progress in meeting the Paris Accord target of having less emissions than Canada was manufacturing or having in the air at 2000, in the 2005 levels. Now, where we were targeting 40% below, we are actually only at 7%. And this is bad for the Liberal Party, even though they don't want to admit it. They're in Parliament trying to blame the Conservatives. I mean, I don't know. I don't know about that. That's a different tactic. But I would he- let you hear this one aspect of the report before I dive right into it. According to the Commissioner, the Liberals are deceiving Canadians with, quote, unreliable emission reduction estimates. So not only are they not telling us the truth about the um, progress that they're making, that they're not even telling us that the progress, that the steps that they're taking are not good enough. They're not functioning. And the auditor report shows that they are making some progress on some things like, you know, they've made the funding for the car, for the electric car. Like they put it in some bonuses for the electric car. But they have done nothing on buses. They've done, you know, like the list is really long. Not to mention that the carbon emissions are nowhere near where they claim they would be. And I don't believe that Canadians should be killing ourselves over this. This is enough, is enough, is enough, is enough. I mean, the Americans don't have one, and they are producing less carbon than Canada. I think it's time we as Canadians admit that the Liberal Party has no idea what they're doing. Now, it's a 48-page report. I read it all. There's a couple of parts on the overall message, which was right in the beginning of it. Overall, the federal government had advanced a variety of mitigation measures to support progress toward a net zero transition, but it's still not made sufficient progress to reduce greenhouse gas to reduce greenhouse gas emissions to meet its 2030 target. Another gem coming out of it, the federal organization estimates of expected emission reduction from the measures were often overly optimistic, and assessments of the value for money they delivered to Canadians were varied. Which is just a fancy way to say that it wasn't worth what they said it was worth and that they're nowhere near achieving what they claim to be achieving. Now they have a page for key factors and findings, and of course some of it is just going to be regurgitated. However, there's one thing here that I like. With its first progress report on Canada's 2030 Emissions Reduction Plan Environment and Climate Change Canada, which is Stephen Gilbo's department, missed opportunities to enhance transparency, such as publishing milestones and timetables for implementing each measure because they released a report in 2023 telling him that he wasn't telling the Canadian people enough. Now, this guy will run around on the news and say, oh, people don't understand about this check coming back. Because the, 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 the flaw, the major flaw with the Liberal Party in Canada and the far left in general is that they think that the rest of us are, are not as smart as they are. So we couldn't possibly be able to fathom all of the nuances of the you know, lawyers that are coming up with these ideas or in the case of Stephen Gilbo, I think he's a political science major, like he's not even a lawyer. Now, I get that, you know, he might want to keep things quiet so that people don't know what he's up to, but this report says that he's not, he shouldn't be keeping it quiet, and it doesn't seem to bother him in any way, shape, or form. Now, a little farther in, there is what is essentially the worst news that the Stephen Gilbo could ever hear to meet the 2030 target, the greatest share of emissions reductions will need to occur in the next six years. Canada remains the worst performer among all member countries of the group of seven since 1990 and 2005. And they have a chart for that, which I'll get to. But that's what they call the G7, the group of seven. I understand that the Americans are in that. They don't have a carbon tax in any way, shape, or form, and they're still performing better than Canada. Imagine that. Imagine all of the struggle, all of the inflation, all of the terrible, terrible things that Canadians are suffering and going through. So this guy can run around in Azerbaijan and say, oh, look at us. We're doing our best. We're leading the way and all this crap. And we're not even leading the way. 
So it's just a gigantic gaslight. It's just baloney. Now here in 7.5, it says in March 2022, the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change published the 2030 Emissions Reduction Plan. The first plan under the Act outlined the measures that the federal government intended to take to achieve Canada's 2030 target. Our office, meaning the Auditor General, published a report on the 2030 Emissions Reduction Plan. So he made this plan in 2022. These guys read it and did a report. In November 2023, they produced their opinion on his report which concluded the missing that missing and inconsistent information delays in launch important measures the lack of reliability and projections hindered the credibility of the plan and the plan has not been updated since that audit so almost a year ago these guys told them hey listen well actually a year ago these guys told them hey your plan doesn't work we don't agree with it it's no good they said yeah yeah we're going to get to it we're going to get to it and they've done nothing they haven't lifted a finger so what are they really up to what are they really doing this is something that we need to be to be looking deeper into because obviously they're not trying to do whatever they claim to do or they would be focused on this stuff. I mean, I suppose they would either be focused on it or they would be trying to make the amend adjustment. Now, I told you there was a chart for them saying that Canada is the worst performer in the G7, and here it is. Performance of group of seven countries reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Percentages change in greenhouse gas emissions. Now, the light green is what the emissions were in from 1990 to 2021 and the brown is from 2005 to 2021. We can see that the reductions like Canada has gone above the zero is bad, right? If coming down is the good, we can see that the United Kingdom leads the way, but Canada with this little brown mark right there is the smallest of all of them. And we have a tenth of the population of many of these countries, and we are nowhere near meeting their targets. And how is that? Well, they're doing it differently. They're not trying to charge everybody into oblivion. They're not trying to take billions of dollars out of the economy so they can put it toward whatever it is the liberals are buying. They are closer on recycling. They are closer on those kinds of situations. Now, this is to, I would love to see what India's and China's and those kinds of countries look like. On, on this chart, they probably go right up through the roof. But I think that for you and I, what we need to see as Canadians is Stephen Gobo and Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Party are misleading us. They're deceiving us. They are standing up these men of honor and lying through their teeth. Since the release of the previous projections in 2022 by Environment and Climate Change Canada, there have been no new substantive federal measures included in the modeling. In fact, assumptions for some of the measurings have been revised to reflect their slow implementation status, resulting in lower projected emissions res reductions than previously expected. The recent decrease to project to 2030 emissions were not due to climate actions taken by the government, but were instead because of revisions to the data methods used in modeling, which of course is just more deceit. It's just more foolishness. It's just more trickery. They're not making any progress at all. 7% in the last 20 years for all the effort that we're going through for all of the sacrifices that Canadians are making while wow. The Liberal Party makes none themselves. None whatsoever. And here we are, struggling, barely getting by. There are people out there living with their no heat on so that they don't, don't have to worry about paying their heat versus having groceries. This is ridiculous. And what do they do about it? What are they doing about it? Nothing. They're standing up in Parliament and trying to tell everybody that it's, it's all the Conservatives' fault. Here's this report. That any minute now, they're going to try and turn around and have the guy rewrite, just like they did with the uh, with the carbon tax audit. They're just going to be, you know, pressuring people to gaslight us, to just feed us a whole bunch of malarkey. They're not telling us the truth. And I think that, I mean, how many times are we going to listen to these people lie before we start to tell ourselves that we need laws against that. We need punishments for these these politicians. These politicians need to be put in prison so that the next crop knows that it's not a good idea to start to do this kind of tricks on Canadians. Honestly, this is intentional deception that is causing Canadians hardships. So all you're doing is lying to Canadians about why they're going through, why you're putting them through so much hardship and all the while not taking accountability for all of that hardship, trying to blame it on the conservatives. 
Now, they did talk about, because I know the Liberals are going to try to counter with, oh, look, some things are, are making progress, and they showed it here, right? They said that they're doing fine on clean power priority investment area, which is, I don't even know what that means, clean power. I mean, we, we in Canada, we, we get power the same way we, we did, right? We, we, I don't know. Public transit priority investment area, which, of course, is just to say that they're making a lot of promises that they're not keeping. Green infrastructure priority investment area, again, making a lot of promises they're not keeping. Uh-oh, then all of a sudden we come into some issues, right? Canada Greener Homes, part of Canada Greener Homes Initiative, is on track. However, the developing the national model code requirements for alterations of existing buildings and the focus of energy efficiency requirement of greenhouse gas emissions is facing challenges. Do you think? So really, what I found out by reading this, the government thinks not only are they trying to get you to buy houses that are made you know, out of not trees, they want to go through all the existing buildings and have you gut it and do it differently so that it suits Stephen Gilbo's vision of what the world should look like. Stephen Gilbo, the guy who climbed up on a woman's roof and harassed, harangued, and threatened her. Is this the guy who should be drafting the vision of what Canada looks like? I'm not convinced. There's some other ones that I want to point out. Small modular reactor action plan implementation is facing challenges because the Liberal government doesn't want to do, though. By doing that, they give local power to people, right? Small modular reactors. The, the model that I've seen that I, that I could talk about with, with any uh, accuracy fits on the back of a, a truck, and you basically drop it in your community, you plug it in, and while well, you have to add water, of course, and then it will produce power for whatever for a long, long time. Now, I would imagine that it probably requires a technician or three. However, the idea that it would be clean, there's no emissions from a nuclear reactor, that it would be small enough to do social, like social, uh, locally, and that you could drop it in almost anywhere because it fits on a truck. So wherever a truck will drive, you can back up, drop it off. I'm sure you got to, you know, you got to probably take a couple of steps, but nonetheless, you do that. Now all of our remote areas have their own electricity and they're no longer under the control of the Liberal Party, which is really why they're not pushing that one. I really like this one because these are now being passed over to Transport Canada and Housing Infrastructure Communities Canada, right? Which is Steve, uh, Sean... Frazier, the housing minister, housing and communities, rural transit solutions fund facing challenges, active transportation fund facing challenges. All of those are buses. There's no rural buses coming in. There's no electrical buses that are coming in. Now I have, I know the solution for that kind of problem. And I will, t I will talk about it when I'm, when I pull together some more information. This one, I just want to point out that we are being lied to, that there's no other way to put it. There's no polite way to put it. You can call it gaslighting, I guess. In the end, it's the same thing. It's a flat-out deception. And I, it's enough. I am tired of these liberals treating us like we don't matter. If they were really looking out for us, they wouldn't do any of this. None of this. They would be like, wait a second, we can't put people through that. But they don't care what we say. They don't care what we do. As long as they got Jagmeet Singh in their back pocket, they can get away with anything they want. Obviously, look at what they've gotten away with now. Carbon tax is not working. Carbon tax is destroying the economy. The Americans are producing less carbon than they did in 2005, and they don't even have a carbon tax. The fact is that Stephen Gobo is not qualified to solve this problem. He's had many years to try and solve it. And all he can do is try and tell you that what he is doing might work sooner or later. Don't worry about it. It's all the conservatives' fault. Meanwhile, you and I are killing ourselves to try to get ahead in this world. Makes me wonder what they really are up to. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.